the next thing I'd like to do is, is talk to you now about slope fields. Slope fields are a visual way of understanding differential equations. So we emphasize in this course the numerical, graphical, and analytical ways of approaching problems. This is really a graphical way of interpreting differential equations. And this is actually going to lead us on to a numerical solution as well. So this is a useful object for us to consider. You're likely to see slope fields on the AP test. So now is a good time for us to um, explore these a little bit and, and maybe bring some questions to class tomorrow. Let's take a look at a, at a relatively simple example of a differential equation again and try to focus on some of the, the behavior of this function. So what I would like to do here is I would like to take a look at the differential equation dy dx is equal to x. This is the equation that we saw just a, a little while ago and we're going to take a look at a visual way of understanding this particular equation. We're going to interpret this equation now in terms of slope and the way in which I'm going to focus on this is really to think about what this, what this says. We can think about dy dx as, as the instantaneous rate of change. We can think about it as the, the slope at a point on the graph. And what this particular equation says is this equation, this differential equation says that the slope at any point on this graph will simply be equal to the x-coordinate of that point. So let's think about some points that might be on this graph. If I look at the origin here, for example, 0, 0, this point has an x value of 0. If it has an x value of 0, then that means that the y value or that the, the y function must also have a slope of 0. And so I know that the graph must be doing something like this in the vicinity of the origin. It must actually be horizontal. It must have a 0 slope. In fact, we can see that any place where the x coordinate is 0, any place where the x coordinate is 0, the slope of this line would have to be 0. So every place here on the y-axis has an x value of 0. So every single point here would have a slope of 0. We can look at other points as well and we can do similar things. If I look at this point right here, the point 1, 0, when the x coordinate is 1, when the x coordinate is 1, our differential equation tells us that the slope must be 1. So that means that at a point like right here, the slope is 1. And that's going to be true for every single point that has an x-coordinate of 1. It's going to have roughly a slope of 1. Likewise, if we go to points to the left of the y-axis and we look at their slopes there, all of the points that have an x-coordinate of minus 1 are going to have a slope of minus 1. And therefore, we can end up with a series of lines here that show us the slope of the, the slope of the graph here at this particular point. And we can go through and do several other points in in here as well, right? If we move to the next x coordinate to the right of x equals one, if we move here, we're gonna find that the slope is two. It gets a little harder to to draw these, but we can see that it's a slightly steeper graph here. And if we move on even farther and, and choose a, an x value of 3, we get something that's much steeper still. Very difficult for me to, uh, to sketch that in here so you can see that accurately. But those values are, are getting steeper. Likewise, over here, things will be getting steeper as well. And as we go through and sketch this object in, what we end up with is an object that we call a slope field. What we have really done here is drawn a graphical picture of the, the slope, or at least of the tangent lines, at any particular point on this, on this graph. So this particular object right here would be a slope field for the differential equation 
dy dx is equal to x. So this is a slope field that, that illustrates to us what the tangent lines are doing at any particular point. So this allows us to see the general behavior or the general pattern of, of graphs that would be solutions to this equation. And one of the things you notice is there are several possibilities here. We have, we have a number of, of different situations, a number of different things that, that could be happening here. So if we look at the origin, we can, we can begin to get a sense for the, the curvature here. This is relatively flat here and has slight steepness here and, and gain steepness as we, as we come along here. The same thing to the left. If we follow the behavior of those tangent lines, we get something that looks very much, when the smart board is working nicely, we get something that looks very much like a parabola, which is what we would expect if you think back to what the solutions to this differential equation are. We expect parabolas. We expect parabolas just as, as we see the one here. Of course, this isn't the only parabola that exists here. If we were to start at a different location, we would find that we would have a slightly different curve here. And one of the beauties of the slope field is that it shows us the whole set of possible solutions, or at least some of the slopes there. Now, of course, there's a bit of inference that has to happen here in order to really understand things. Right? We, we do not know. We don't have information, for example, on, on what's going on in between 0 and 1. Or here and here, we have to make some, some inferences in order to do this. But graphically, this gives us a, a good opportunity to see what the solutions may look like, and in particular, how different solutions may change. This is a fairly consistent and, and simple uh, differential equation. Later on, you might find more complicated equations that, that have very strange behaviors. Um, and we will look at some of those in class the next time that we meet. So this is a slope field, and, and we can get a slope field very easily by going through and, and doing steps very similar to the steps that we, have, that we have worked through here. So I'd like us to look at another example of a, of a slope field and, and, take an ex and look at an example of something that's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to restrict myself to just the x, y axis and the first quadrant. That will give us a little bit of room um, to work here. And let's go ahead and, and take a look at the slope field dy dx here for the function. Um, let's let's go ahead and do y over x. Okay. Notice one of the interesting things we can do here is this would not be an easy differential equation to solve. Right? There would definitely be some challenges here. What function has a derivative? that is equal to the ratio of its x and y coordinates. That's not a, an easy equation to, to solve. It's, it's not something that we know the antiderivative of right away, primarily because it contains uh, both x and y on the right-hand side. So that presents, that presents some problems for us. However, we can use slope fields to get a sense for what the solutions may look like. Okay? And if they look like some graphs that we are familiar with, then, then perhaps we'll be able to figure out what functions to, um, to try here. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at some, at some points here. Clearly, we're going to have issues when, when x equals 0. If x equals 0, then the slope is undefined. So, so basically, we, we sort of have an asymptote here um, at, the, at the axis here. But we can, we can go ahead and, and pick through some, some other points. Clearly, whenever y is 0, the tangent slopes are going to be 0. If we plug in 0 for y, we end up with, with just flat lines here. And so we can see, we can see a set of solutions here or, or, or a set of, of, of pieces here. Clearly, if we choose um, the function y equals 0, then, then the derivative of that would satisfy uh, our differential equation. Let's go ahead and look at some non-trivial pieces here. And, and we'll just restrict ourselves to integer values of x and y. So if I start with the point 1, 1 here and ask myself what's going on, what is the slope of the tangent line going to be here? If x and y are both 1, the ratio y over x is going to be 1. And so we're going to end up with a, with a slope value that's basically equal to 1. The same thing is true if I look at 2, 2 or if I look at 3, 3, or 4, 4, or 5, 5, all of those points are going to have slope values of 1. As long as x and y are equal, the ratio of the slopes will be 1. But now some more interesting things are going to occur as we go through and look at 
other points. If I look, for example, at the point 2, 1, when y is 1 and x is 2, that's going to give me a slope value of 1 half, which means I'm basically going to be looking at going from this point here and constructing a slope of, of 1 half. That means I'm going to have something that looks possibly like this. That, that could be a good representation of a slope of 1 half there. Here at the point 3, comma 1, when x is 3 and y is 1, we're going to have a slope of 1 third, a slope of 1 fourth, a slope of 1 fifth, a slope of 1 sixth. So here you can see that these slope values tend to be leveling out now. If I look at the point here, which is the point 3, 2, that's going to give me a slope value of roughly 2 thirds. So not quite 1, but close. And these will start to level off more and more here as the x value gets bigger and the y value gets smaller. We can see the, the way that our solutions are going to look. The same thing here. This will be very close to 1 and will start to decrease. Very close to 1 and start to decrease here. So this is what the solutions on the right hand side, the slope field here, might, might look like. If we look at points to the left of the line y equals x, we look for example at the point 1 comma 2. This is a point that has a y coordinate of 2 and x coordinate of 1. And therefore the slope of the line here is going to be 2, which means that this is going to aim somewhat like this. You can see it's quite a bit steeper. The point 3, 2 is going to be not quite so steep. That's going to be a little bit closer to 1. And as we get up here, things are going to get closer and closer to 1. These points are going to get steeper and steeper as we, as we look here. So our slope field, the rough sketch of our slope field looks something like this. Now, does this look like any particular function that, that we know? Not at the moment. This doesn't necessarily give us a, a good indication of, of what the function is that solves this particular differential equation. Differential equations are very difficult, um, but they're also very important. Most things in, in the sciences, particularly in physics, but even in, in chemistry and to an extent in biology, many things in economics and business uh, where this heavy math is involved, make use of differential equations because they're a simple way of, of beginning an approach to modeling some sort of behavior. So we will get some more practice with slope fields later on as well, especially when we begin to practice for the AP test. But this is the idea of a slope field. It's a, it's a visual representation of what solutions to a particular differential equation could look like. And again, notice that, that depending on the initial value that we choose, for our problem. If we, if we are given an initial value problem, um, we may have a solution that looks as trivial as, as this or could be as complicated as something that goes like, like this. It's difficult to determine without taking more points in our slope field. So accuracy here depends on how far those points are.